What I'm going to talk about today is, in fact, well, it's an attempt of um, provide a uniform proof of the bijection between two sets. Um, so uniform and more structural proof. So I'm going to explain what I mean by that. So the two sets are um, generalizations to any uh, complex reflection group, which is well generated, of uh, classical objects in combinatorics, which are um, known crossing and known as sympartitions. Um, so, okay, the attempt of so making such a bijection, uh, let's say uniform and structural, is in fact, um, well, it was part of a conjecture stated by uh, Armstrong, Reiner, and Rhodes a few years ago, 2012, I guess. Um, and so, what I'm reporting on is a very ongoing uh, project with Ian Gordon um, that aimed um, at proving such a conjecture. So it's very ongoing because, so we are far uh, from proving the conjecture. So what we have so far is a um, refined version of the conjecture, um, and we can, which is somehow, it looks like it's providing what we exactly need, and we can check some cases for, for the moment. So what I'm going to present to you is this somehow first step towards um, a proof. Um, so anyway, I'd like to start from the beginning, so I'm going to first uh, recall what these two uh, sets are in the very classical setting, so type A, so non-crossing partitions, uh, which we've seen already yesterday in Philip Bian's talk, and a new nesting. Then I'm going to um, describe these two sets in a different way, which somehow tells us how we should think of them in general. Um, and then, once we have them, I'm going to tell you this conjecture and explain what we are trying to do. Okay, so uh, we are talking about partition, so we fix um, well, some integer, uh, let's say, bigger than two, otherwise it's not very interesting. Um, also, we want to look at well, partitions, so let me start. So I told you we have two sets. So in here, I want to say something about non-crossing partitions of N. Here I'm going to talk about this other set, known as thing partitions. Okay, on N. Okay, so um, what we're turning on crossing partitions, when a partition of N is just a collection, so we are, well, partitioning the set of uh, integers from one up to N into, well, this joint subsets. Well, and now, how, how can we uh, visualize a non-crossing partition? So we've seen this already yesterday, but let me just uh, recall this. Well, we, we, take a, we take a circle. We uh, draw some dots. Okay. Let's say we number them in clockwise order, so it doesn't really matter when we start, and that's going to be important. Um, and then at this point, at this point uh, each one, so what I do, I take one subset bi, and then I look at the convex R hull of this bi. Now partition is non-crossing if, so this convex hull, uh, they don't cross, okay? so they don't uh, intersect, so they're all pairwise disjoint. Okay. 
So let me just um, show you what, uh, uh, the non-crossing partition from n equals 3. It's probably not the best example because all partitions are non-crossing in this case, but uh, I'm going to need it later. So one, have some. So I have one, two, three points. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay. And then I'm partitioning uh, one, two, three, this set. So I can, for example, just take maybe, okay. okay. Just the boring partition. And so I'm not connecting anything. Then I can take one, two, and three, and so on. So one, two, three. Uh, two, one, three, and one, two, three all together. Okay. Great. So, and just to convince you that not all partitions are non crossing, let me, well, look at, for example, N4. And here again, we have one, two, three, four. And if I take the partition, one, three, two, four is clearly not good. So what do we have here? So again, I, so here the way of thinking of these partitions for to take a, a circle and put all these dots. Um, so draw all these dots on it. Now I do the same, but on a, on a line, okay? The kind of oriented serial line. I have now the n dots. Start from here, one, two, three up to n. Um, and now if I have i and j with i smaller than j in a given block, and I have no other uh, number inside that block, which is between i and j, I'm drawing an arc. Okay? So somehow I just have configurations of points on the line and some arcs. among them, but in such a way that I don't, uh, so we don't, allow, we don't allow stuff in this, so they're like a nest, so these arcs are nesting, so we don't want something like this, okay? Um, so like, again, let me see what happens for n equals three, can just have no arcs, and then I, I have well, this correspond to one, two, and three. If I had this arc here, these are just number one, two, three, that going to be one, two, and three, and so on. So that's two, three, and just one single thing. Um, great. And again, N3 is not a good example, but like for N4, we could have a, con a configuration uh, looking like this. Well, okay, it was here. It's not good. Okay, okay so um, now we have these two um, sets, and now both Sets. So if you want to count how many elements are in these sets, well, in both cases, we get uh, the Catalan number. So, like one. Okay. So that was some of the first remark. Um, and second remark is that, so the way we are describing these two sets using points on um, something, and in this case, they are on a circle. So it looks like these sets have some more structure, some more symmetry. 
So you see that if you now rotate the circle, so nothing really depends. I mean, we can just rotate it, and the configuration we're going to get, it's again a known uh, crossing partition. And that's something we are at least apparently missing here. Um, okay. Okay, so. Um, um, okay, next. I said I like. So, what I will do will be uh, I will consider so a generalization of the sets. Um, and so I have to, to describe them in a maybe a little uh, different way. Because here we really just see somehow type A combinatorics. Um, okay. So the key thing is that, so if we uh, look at this N, so non-crossing partitions of N, we can in fact embed, the, embed them in the symmetric group over n letters. So and the way you do it, oh, I needed this down. <laughs> OK. Let me, OK. Let me just do this quickly. Oh. Yeah. And just write it here. So, um, OK. So what I was saying is, so we can, in fact, embed these non-crossing partitions inside the symmetric group. And the way you do it is somehow you replace these brackets with these brackets. OK. So this thing just corresponds. So we fix an enumeration of our points. Now we have this partition. And then this element is going to correspond just to the identity element. So that's so just in cycle. So here we have one, two, and three is a fixed point, and so on. One is fixed, two, three, and then this one, three, six, one, two, three. Okay. Um, so you can do that in general. And now, uh, a result, and I think it's Philip. I don't know. Philip Bien, is that in fact we can describe explicitly the image of this embedding. So, and um, so the elements this non-crossing partitions corresponds to. Uh, so let me first write. Uh, are uh, a certain interval in the Cayley graph of the symmetric group. So let me be more precise. So here we have just the n cycle. Uh, so one, two, three there. Um, and here we've seen this somehow already appearing. So what we have is somehow, um, it's not the Bruja order, but it's this absolute order. So what you need to do is that, um, so you define a length function from, say, an absolute length function from Sn to uh, non-negative integers. And well, the absolute length of W is the minimal number of transpositions you need uh, to write W as a product of them. Uh, and then you, you just say that y is less or equal than v if and only if all t y cell t or inverse v. Uh, yes. Okay. So somehow it looks a, li a little bit like the Bruja order, but instead of having the Coxeter generators, we are. Uh, while looking at the whole set of reflections or transpositions. OK. Um, so, OK. Uh, so, before then generalizing this, let me see what we can say 
uh, about this other set. So another way of, of describing known nesting. Well, in this case, again, we can identify uh, this set with a subset of something else, which are, well, the set of subsets of uh, phi plus. These are just the positive roots uh, well, root system of type A. So, well. Okay. And so, how does this go? Um, So again, what I'm now telling you, showing you on this example is this embedding. Um, so if I have an arc, I'm going to associate. So I have a, a configuration of points and arcs. And now to any arcs, I'm going to associate a root. Then one of these, any of these non SE partitions is a well, a set of points and arcs, a configuration. So to any of these things, I associate a set of, uh, of, of positive roots. And I do it as follows. So if I have an arc here from i to j, this is going to go here in the root, let's say alpha ij, okay. epsilon i minus epsilon j. Let's see. I see it's smaller. So for example here, so this is just going to the empty set, because I have no arcs. Um, and this is going to just the set consisting on of epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2. And this will go to the set consisting of epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 coming from this arc, and epsilon 2 minus epsilon 3. Okay, so in general, again, it is possible to, to say what the image of this thing uh, is. And it turns out that what we get is the set of anti-chains in phi plus with respect to the dominance order. So we... Well, we have, so the dominant order on the set of roots, we just say on the positive roots, so the difference, uh, so one root is, is, as usual, like greater than, than another one, if the difference between like the first one and the second, it just can be expressed as a non-negative uh, linear combination of positive roots. Uh, and now anti-chains just means subsets where all the elements are power-wise uh, non-comparable. Okay. So that's what we get. Um, okay. Um, well, I guess now we are, well, we've played enough with type A. Oops. Um, and we should be able to, well, to guess already how to generalize um, all of this to well, to more general setting. Okay. Okay. So let me start again from this side, from a non crossing uh, side. So I want to look at um, some irreducible uh, complex. reflection group, and V is its, but irreducible means that we are, so V is in here acting irreducibly, okay? So that's its reflection representation. Um, so now, in fact, I only want it to be well generated. So that means that if this vector space V has dimension R, then I can find 
well, a set of S1 up to SR generators for, for this group. Okay? So we've seen already in Irini's talk that we had these Coxeter-like presentations. And so in this case, it was generated if my set, so I can find the set of generators having the set cardinality as the dimension of the vector space. Um, okay. So once I have this set of generators, I can look at this element in W, which is just the product of them. Okay, so I, I number them, I choose whatever, whatever order I like, and then I take the product. And then we also define by the H, because I'm, I'm going to need it later, uh, just the order of this element. Um, another definition we can give is due to Brady and Watt. Um, well, we define the, non the set of non-crossing elements of W as the, you know, the interval between E and C. Well, the order is defined as above, where the set of transpositions, uh, instead of transpositions, we have the set of reflections of W. So these are just the elements uh, of W which fix, which fix uh, could I mention one hyperplane in V. Okay. Um, yeah. So maybe, so there are um, some things to notice. So if we take, uh, we consider V the symmetric group, we take a set of generators, so it's a well-generated uh, complex reflection groups, if we look at that acting on it, well, complexify reflection representation, then we take as a set of generators all uh, transpositions, simple transpositions, so i, i plus one, and then if we multiply them, we're gonna get uh, the end cycle. Then it depends on your convention, convention on how you compose, maybe you get the inverse. But, uh, so that's uh, this generalization. Then second, uh, nothing really depends on C. Um, the, nothing, well, the structure of the interval don't dep doesn't depend on C. So the set of, of generators is somehow uniquely determined up to order and, and conjugation. And, and this, the process structure of this guy is, um, so it doesn't change if we say stable under uh, Conjugation. Well, the set stable under conjugation. And maybe the important thing, uh, so, so, yes. So if you have another Coxeter element, then you just get it by conjugating the first one and, and all the intervals also move in the same way. And the, the last but important remark I want to make is that you remember I was saying that these non crossing partitions look like, so this set having this action of, of the cyclic group, so of Z, N, so rotating uh, this configuration. Well, here we have the same, we have again an action of Z. This time is ZH, acting H is the order of the Coxeter number, because you can just conjugate every element by a C. So this element, you can just conjugate everything by C, and the interval is stable. So we have, again, a uh, similar uh, situation. OK. Um, so what do we have now to do there? Well, here, unlucky, we first have to restrict a little bit. So you see, what we, we, what's uh, appearing there is the um, uh, root, uh, well, it's this root system. Um, and so we, we're going to need to restrict ourselves first to the case of W, well, uh, a finite value group. Okay. Well, now again, in this case, we can say, well, I just define a uh, non-estern um, elements of W 
as a set of anti chains in phi plus. Now phi plus is, of course, the set of positive roots um, of W. And now I just maybe let me spend like one minute uh, motivating the title of the talk that was about parking spaces. I'm not going to talk about really parking functions because I don't want to spoil next talk. Uh, but like, so why, I mean, we've seen just like non-crossing, non nesting stuff. Well, the point is that anti-chains in phi plus can be identified with W orbits on so Q mod H plus one Q, where Q now is the root lattice of W. Um, and now, uh, well, now W orbits on here, they're in fact uh, parameterized. So maybe let me see that. And now, now this thing in type A is just, uh, well, Q would be Z to the N mod, but anyway, Q plus N plus one Q in type A. In fact, this was called by Hyman in his uh, work on M factorial, just the, uh, it's the parking space. Well, it's the parking space because you have a, so first you have a bijection with uh, parking functions. Which you will see next talk. Um, well, because of that mostly. And then if you look now at W orbits, you really get uh, this set. So somehow that's why these spaces are called parking spaces. Because you are somehow trying to, well, you look at a more general setting at W orbits, and they should really correspond to this action of the symmetric group on, on, on this set. Um, OK. So, well, so what can we say now about these uh, two sets? Well, again, we count the elements here, and the count also here. Um, and now, so that's a, a result of Cellini, Papi, or, or different approach so this set is counted by the W analog of Catalan numbers. So now what is that? So let me first write a formula and then uh, I'm going to explain. So have di plus h over i, i from 1 to r. OK, so R was the dimension of our vector space. And now what we do, and this di are the degrees of the group. So what's happened is that we look at C of V. Well, W is acting on V. We can look at the W invariants. Well, now this is a free uh, module. Well, it's a free algebra generated by R uh, homogeneous polynomials. And now, uh, so these DIs are the degrees of these polynomials, which are uh, called basic invariants. And maybe let me mention now, because I'm going to use it later, that I'm numbering them in such a way. Well, I'm putting in degrees in an increasing order, but the very important thing is that the last one is the highest degree one. The other one we are not really going to care about. So in particular, so degree of FR, so that's maximal degree. Uh, which coincides uh, with the Coxeter number. Um, okay. 
So and so maybe also when well, I'm here, there's still an equal sign missing. Um, well, that's also true. That's uh, this is. But the difference is that this uh, equality is proven in a case-free way, but here it, it depends heavily on some case-by-case uh, -case computations. Okay. And maybe, uh, now since we still have upstairs uh, uh, that uh, formula, maybe let me uh, notice that. So in the case of the symmetric group, the degrees, so we have r equals n minus 1. And now the degrees are 2, 3, 4, up to n. And now here, so h is n, is n for sn. And now you recover exactly the Catalan number. The usual one. Now, let me. So, any question? Okay. No? This is going to take a while. Um, so what I'm going to do next is, um, well, you see, we are, so we have, can you read it? No, maybe not. Yeah. Can you read there? OK. Uh, so we have somehow generalized this notion to well, here on the left-hand side to any well generated complex refraction group, but on the right-hand side, we're still, let's say, unsatisfied. Because we had this, uh, well, we, need, we still need a root uh, lattice, right? Or at least, uh, well, we, we want to talk about no nesting uh, stuff. So what are we going to do? So what I'm um, going to tell you is uh, what Armstrong, Armstrong Reiner uh, wrote, somehow proposed as a, a substitute for NNW in a more uh, general setting. Let me say, wrote, uh, and that's something they call uh, algebraic parking space. OK. Well, so we are in the same now situation as uh, upstairs. So one and irreducible. Well generated complex reflection group. Um, what I need, well, I need to take a theta from V to V, which is, well, I want it to be a polynomial mapping. Uh, of degree h plus 1. So again, I'm keeping the same notation as upstairs. So h is always going to be the Coxeter number. Okay? So the order of this element uh, we've chosen. And again, it doesn't depend on the choice of c. Uh, in fact, I want even more. I want a homogeneous, well, of degree h plus 1. Homogeneous. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Well, then I want something more. Well, we have W acting on V, and I want this map to be W equivariant. Mm. 
Okay. And finally, I have a condition on the fiber as zero. So one that I map in only zero to zero. And now what I'm Armstrong uh, running our roads are calling algebraic parking space is the fixed uh, point uh, locus of this uh, theta. Okay. So these are the V and V such that theta V is just V. Okay. So I'm just mapping V to itself. So maybe why, so why are they calling this um, algebraic parking space? Well, because in fact, uh, if we have uh, all of these assumptions, well, if everything in here is satisfied, then uh, what happens is that C, V, mod, theta. Uh, well, this is finite dimensional. Uh, this is, in fact, isomorphic to. So, in the case, in the crystallographic case, it's isomorphic to this thing. Oh, yes. So that's a polynomial, yeah, maybe. So that's a, somehow, so that's an element of CV. And just, is the ideal generated in here. Generated by the component of theta? Yeah, exactly, sorry. Yeah, I mean, that's right. The correct way you're thinking of it is some of multi-valued functions. And then here you're really, yeah, you, you should think of it like theta is really theta 1 up to theta r, uh, such that theta i, ah, OK, theta 1 up to theta r. Let's say you fix x1, xr, okay, basis of v. And now this is such that if we send theta i to xi, this is or x i to theta i, whatever. <laughs> this is a W isomorphism. So somehow, point is that C V, we look at the h plus one degree part of C V, homogeneous, well, degree piece of C V, and then there there are going to be, well, there's going to be uh, there are going to be copies of of of, of V dual in there, and somehow we are choosing a copy, so that's what's happening. So this theta is uh, uh, giving you an, well, choosing a copy of, of, of the dual in CV of degree H plus one. Is it clear? <coughs> yeah, that's right here. No, let me say it back to space. Let me, sorry. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, here, when I talk about this, I really think about like parking functions. So here you think about like the dimension, and then you are like some high basis when one to one uh, correspondence with uh, parking functions. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, so now what do we have here? Right, here we have a bunch of points in V, so it's a set. But it's also a set equipped with a W action, because W was acting on here, and this theta is now W equivalent by assumption, by construction. So in particular, W is acting here. So now V theta 
is, uh, well, is equipped with a W action. And moreover, we also have uh, the secret group of order H just acting by rescaling everything by the H roots of unity. So, and has uh, the H action somehow generated by well, maybe rescaling by E2, so multiplying by the H roots of unity. because it's homogeneous. Okay, so what's the moral of the story? Well, that we want uh, to consider now W orbits of this space. And what we define is this known nesting, so elements for W, which is now the set of W orbits of uh, w orbit on V theta. It's um yeah. okay. Okay, so we are I'm ready to state uh, the conjecture of Armstrong runner roads. And what they say is like somehow, well, I told you we want, I mean, what, what was my aim is to like somehow prove in a uniform way and generalize a source of bijection, right? So what they're telling us is that N and W now defined in this way, let me write V theta mod W. Well, that's now well, in bijection with NC, uh, w, oh, maybe there wasn't the other way around. Okay, well, sorry. Uh, but even more, so when I was talking about structures, that in fact, uh, well, this map is now ZH equivariant. Well, this map, what does this mean? In fact, what their conjecture is that there, is, there exists. So there exists a map which is, which is ZH equivariant. Uh, which is a bijection between these two sets. Okay. Well, at this point, at least for, so if one could prove this now in a, let's say, case-free way, well, then at this point, at least for, for the crystallographic case, well, one knows that the uh, cardinality of non-nesting elements of W is given by Catalan numbers for W, and then that would somehow provide uh, a uniform proof to the fact that also known crossing partition, known crossing elements of um, complex refraction groups, least crystallographic, are given by the same. Uh, so, yeah. Does it depend on theta? Or? It doesn't. It doesn't depend on theta if you if you have these assumptions. Okay, that's a very good question because it was like my next point is that. Well, in the case of, of real uh, groups, so we're talking about, let's say, co finite coxeter groups, uh, you can use uh, representation theory of rational training algebras. And that CV mod theta 
is uh, well, just isomorphic to a certain module for rational Chernik algebra at the parameter equals h plus one over one plus one over h or h plus one over h, which is a finite dimensional module. Uh, so in that case, uh, you have this theta, so it's not, let's say, an empty conjecture, at least for, for the real case. Uh, yes. Thanks. Yeah, it somehow was a little bit our starting point. Now we are thinking about something else. Uh, we are thinking that, in fact, uh, you can realize this set at, um, like, as a set of certain special solutions for uh, a system of PDE. And this would be a very general thing using the theory of Frobenius manifold. But we are still, that's still too fresh. So let's say that it's, let's say it's this conjecture for the moment makes, com makes sense if we consider the case of W coxeter group. But should be somehow, as soon as this is non, I mean, should be non empty. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Is there any other question? Yeah. Because you are talking about parking spaces. Yeah. There are also parking uh, functions on the left, on the right If you look at the maximal chain, you will also talk about parking functions. Yes, there is. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I can say that much now. Maybe, maybe in five minutes I can say something. Because, so what I'm going to talk about uh, now in the next. 15 minutes is what we're actually doing. And, and what we're doing is, in fact, uh, very much inspired uh, by the work of David Bessis. And, and somehow, so that means we're using the geometry of the discriminant of W. And at that point, and there, there was, uh, that's our work of Vivian Dupol, then uh, studying the geometry of, of the discriminant, it's, uh, it's related to maximal chains. But maybe, maybe we can talk about this later because we need probably a lot of things. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so probably I need a clean board again. Um, oh, no. Oh, yes, no, it's good. Okay, so how, how are we going to, to deal with this uh, conjecture? So that's what we do with Ian. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is to, what we can do for the moment, um, is we want, I'm going to show you I, to produce a map in a very, so in a complete, uh, case-free way, so we're not going, this is not going to depend on particular combinatorics of type A, type D, type C, or whatever. Uh, so a map, say B, from this uh, space uh, to uh, the interval we're interested in. Maybe, don't let me specify C yet. Let me just we say NCW. Uh, and then, uh, so this map is going to be the H, that H equivariant. And we're still unlikely missing the, the most important part, which is the fact that it's bijective. 
for the moment. We can check several cases. So let me tell you how you construct this map. Uh, and then it should be bijection. Okay. So, um, so our space, so V theta mod W, well, this, let's say, this set lives in here, kind of this orbit space. So let me start then first defining a map from, from this space to that set. Okay, so what is that? Well, this is just isomorphic to AR because we said, well, CVW, so the fixed, uh, well, the invariants of CV are uh, generated, it's this algebra generated by R, algebraically independent uh, homogeneous polynomials. And there's a spec of C of F1, FR. Well, I just, that's just an affine space. So let me think of it as A R minus one times A A one, okay? So we have a complex line and the rest. So somehow this corresponds to the spec so to the first R minus one generators, and then just the last one, okay? So that's why I was, and that's important where I take the last one here. I was telling, I'm not gonna enter into details, but like, so what we are constructing, what we are getting, it depends uh, on the study of the geometry of the discriminant of, of W, and it's important that the discriminant if W is a well-generated complex refraction group, uh, can be rewritten as a polynomial in FR, which is monic, uh, having well coefficients in CF1, FR minus one. And that's important, so that somehow means that if you look at this hypersurface defined by the zero locus of the discriminants, you don't have vertical asymptotes. But anyway, so that's, that's the polynomial with the highest degree, so degree, uh, the coxeter number. Okay, so we have, let me denote Y as the spec of this C, F1, FR. This one, and C, okay. And now what's important, well, we can project on Y. And what is important is to look by the fibers of these maps, okay. So, let me maybe, so we have Y times C. I'm identifying these to a V mod W, okay? So if I have a V here, in fact, I'm just identifying with some Y, Z, okay? So if I talk about one element in here, this Y, Z, uh, well, then I'm just saying, I'm sending the class of V to F1 of V, FR minus one of V, FR of V, and that's well defined because these are all invariants. Okay, well, that's uh, the way you usually construct a JT. Okay, and then we said we project on, on Y. Now, so for any Y here, I have, say, a copy of C okay, in there. Okay, so what I'm going to look at now is uh, the following thing. So I to any element yz, I associate uh, the following thing. So this is a, I draw, so let's say that's my y. That's the copy of c over y. Let's say that's z, okay? Now I want to draw a small loop around z, but all contained contained in minus one y. Well, it's a small loop around yz all contained in p minus one y, okay? So in, in this, okay? But in fact, well, it's even more, it's not only all contained in p minus one y, but also doesn't have, uh, doesn't go 
around uh, anything of... Okay, let me let eight and tell you what it is. So what I told you is that I wanted, again, to study this geometry of the discriminant locus, and now I denote by H, while this is the hypersurface of, well, of degree R, uh, whose equation is a discriminant So another way of seeing this it just, so in B, we had all the reflection hyperplanes, and so that's the image of uh, these hyperplanes in the quotient space. Okay. Um, okay, so we have this hypersurface uh, in there. And then since we are projecting in this way, some of this hypersurface is going to intersect the fiber all in a finite number of points. And what I'm saying is that I don't want so anything like this if Z is here. But now Z can lie on H, so in that case, well, I can go around Z, but not around any other hole, okay? Well, so now what do we have? Well, now we have a path. Well, that's a path in um, V minus uh, so V mod W minus H, okay? Which is the same as V reg mod W, and we've seen this already in Irene's talk, that if we look at the fundamental group of this thing, well, this is, well, by definition, the braid group of, of our complex reflection group. Okay, so now we have an element in this pi one. And what we're gonna do, now, so I wanted uh, something here. Well, now I have an element in here, but I can fix. So here, that's a choice to be made. So I, have to, I fix a projection to, to W. Okay, again, we've seen in Irene's talk, so I have to decide which order my generators have. Okay. And so this trick provides us with a map well, from V mod W, but then in particular, I can look at this special, so distinguished set of points. Well, for the moment to, to W, but in fact, uh, by Bessie's work, the image of this map is not only in W, but it's in EC, where the Coxeter, well, well, this C now depends on the fixed. Um, projection. Okay, so, well, we produced now a map. B, as we wanted. Okay. So let me conclude with some remarks. Um, well. So again, what we've done, uh, what we've done uh, was to produce this map, and so somehow in this way, so first of all, we get somehow a, a let's say, refined version of, of this conjecture, uh, which is, so if we have VW, again, irreducible, well, generated, complex reflection group. And now theta, let me just say, as before. Okay, so there was this polynomial map with all uh, these properties. Uh, then, uh, well, we produce an explicit map, which is defined in general. And then now this 
has to be a ZH isomorphism. So what we can already show is that it is indeed the H, so, so which is indeed the H, that H equivariant. Uh, so this, so my, we can see this extra structure appearing. Um, and the action, let's say here we have an action by conjuga conjugation of the coxeter element we said, and here it corresponds somehow. So here we are living in a topological world, and this is going around the origin. So you are, C is like the same as looping around the origin, and the origin is always going to be uh, containing in our set. Uh, and then, uh, or maybe let me see also that we can, well, we can check it for, for some explicit example. So it's a bit disappointed because the main point is to get something which is uniform, but you have to start from uh, some point. Then we can reduce, so we can say that, um, so it's enough to consider complex, well, well-generated reducible complex reflection groups, uh, whose generators are all involutions. And then if they have higher order, you can recover, so you can get the result uh, as a consequence. Um, yeah, maybe I should also mention that on this side there's still something which is uh, case dependent, but here is completely uh, uh, case free. Okay, thanks a lot. Other questions or comments? Yeah. So you said in some cases you can. Uh, so you said in some cases you can check. So, for example, if W is the symmetric group, does it? Do you can you check uh, your construction? In some or? cases, I really meant some explicit cases. So okay. we can sit down for ah. a couple of days. Okay. <laughs> no, like for example, I mean you you can track these points. So, like for example, for I don't know, S2, you can really prove it, because you just have something. So this V theta is always going to look like this, the origin and plus minus something. And so then the orbits are just one and two, and, and <laughs> the rotation. And well, not only in this case. So V2 is already a little bit more involved. And yes, so we still, I mean, we are hoping to at least be able to control Bn in general, and this would give the whole, well, G, D, one, two, oh, N. So the whole, exactly for, for D bigger than, for what I said, that it's enough to, to look at uh, uh, gross width. At least that. <laughs> but yeah, it's still, there's still work to do, to be done. Yeah. Yeah, for example, in a symmetric case, well, it's SN case, type A case. So, what you you you, you can choose as theta? Uh, ah, that's more complicated. So, while for B and D it's very easy to to find the theta, yeah, yeah. already for type A it's it's kind of annoying. Yeah. So I I cannot write it <laughs> now. I should like sit down and 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 find it again. So you, I mean. So somehow you just, you really write down equations so you know what, what theta i has to do to alpha i or something, mm -hmm. and you recover it. Uh, so now I must, I, I have to mention something, that there's some, I mean in, in the paper of, uh, so Armstrong, Reiner, and Rhodes, they have, so some, I mean they've checked a lot of things, so they proved in fact, BN, uh, DN, and some like weaker form of this conjecture for type A, but it's everything relying a lot on the like different combinatorics, and so that's why I mean our hope is that there's something, somewhat more intrinsic in in this V theta, and that's why we are trying to to define it as a some more canonical set. So, yeah. Sorry. 
you associate a non-trivial bread to an element of v theta only if, the, if you get a point in the discriminant? That's correct. So is v theta in, included in the discriminant? Yes. So now, exactly. So v theta has, is somehow, I mean, it looks more or less always like that. So you have always the origin. You have always exactly one orbit. So a cardinality of w points, which are uh, not lying on any hyperplane. And then, and, then, and then somehow you look, you stratify the, the discriminant and you see all these other points appearing. Somehow, I mean, in this NCW, so let's say you have um, some loop here, some element here, and then, uh, so if the points you are going around was, how can I say, so was lying in, um, so you stratify your discriminant, yeah. and you look at the multiplicity of your point, and somehow that's the, that's the length, yeah, that's the absolute yeah. length of the element in here. Yeah, but so since, so, yeah. So is it clear that uh, V theta is uh, include a subset of the discriminant? Uh, I think, I'm, uh, I think it's in general it's not. No. No, but so so it's, I mean. I mean a priori is not. Um, no, because uh, you will associate the non-trivial element only to the points inside the discriminant. So yeah, I was a bit confused. Yeah, I mean, I, I said there's still I'm there's still a lot of <laughs> work to be done. Um, Uh, when you say that you you can restrict the um, uh, the, the case to the, the study to the case of uh, reflection groups generated by reflections of order two, mm -hmm. uh, do you mean that you want, that you just use the fact that all these discriminants can appear? This plus the fact that some of the Catalan numbers okay, but uh, are the same. Okay, but this fact that uh, all the all the complements of the discriminants can appear from a, a, a two reflection groups. So it's a, he, there is no case-free proof of that. There, there is no case-free proof of that. But the fact that uh, every complement of the discriminant can be described That's from true. a two reflection group. So uh, unless you have a proof of that. But. That that's true. I think. I mean, I think at least, at least for what concerns, I think at least for what concerns V theta, but I might be wrong. And at least for, for GD1N and GD12, I mean, you can write down really formulas. And, and, and you get that, so you, you get your set of points, and you can track them somehow. So you're just, you have a very explicit uh, map from, let's say, your, well, V and, and V prime, and you see where the points are going. And then at that point, you just check that also, so some of the Catalan uh, numbers are all simplifying. So that's what you can do. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, so let's thank Martin again. Thank you.